What's up, Spawning Ground Specialists? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for March 24th, being held at the Spawning Grounds. Our cookware for this rotation is the 52 gal, the Octo Brush, the H3 Nozzle Nose, and the 96 gal. Spawning Grounds always does really good with high mobility weapons that have plenty of painting power. And since we have three shooters and one brush, we actually have some pretty good mobility and painting power in this composition. But we also have to remember the fact that Spawning Grounds does best with a blaster or a charger with piercing damage. And since we don't have that, we have to put a good focus on maintaining that lesser control or else we're going to get overrun and we're not going to be able to get to our basket. That means that extra painting needs to be done by the 52 gal and the octo brush just to make sure that we have enough of this area painted so that we can get around. And since the Octo Brush is the only weapon that can deal a lot of damage really quickly to a lot of enemies, we may have issues with overluring, and since all of our weapons have some pretty good range, we're probably going to also have some problems with bosses being splat too far away from the basket. So make sure you maintain a good awareness on what's around you, especially if there's any fish sticks that show up. Considering that the H3 and the 96 can take them out from the ground level, we shouldn't have to worry too much about using that extra time to climb the fish stick in order to take it out. The 96 gal and the H3 are also the easiest weapons to take out stingers. So make sure that you're doing your extra part in order to reach those stingers, that way you don't have to deal with them throughout the match. Take them out and then get back to the basket. You don't want to linger on the short lane of spotting grounds any more than you have to. The corners on this map will cause you to not see what's approaching around them, so if ever you get down to the short line, paint the walls and exit vertically instead of using the ramps. And considering almost all the walls are paintable here at spotting grounds, it's really easy to paint an exit on your way down to the shoreline, that way you don't have to worry too much more about it when you're on your way out. And whenever there's a brush in the composition, everyone else needs to make sure that they're focusing on those steelheads, splatting them as soon as they get the chance. You don't want the octo brush to get the tunnel vision on a steelhead when they should be dealing with more lessers or running eggs. The 52 gal and the octo brush both have some pretty good ink efficiency, so make sure you keep yourself topped off, that way you're ready to injure a fly fish whenever you get the chance. As much as this composition does have that painting power, the fire rate is on the awkward side. So try not to allow stuff to get too close to you, and always make sure that you have an exit strategy. Because of the tight funneling points that Spawning Grounds has, in the second half of the match, you have to deal with those bosses that are a bit more of a nuisance. Just to make sure that you can move around and not get overran right there at the end. Since it's easy to get multiple slamming lids right there by the basket, they'll drop so many lessers that you won't be able to move. So drop down a slamming lid and then jump on top, and then try to move in between the slamming lids so that way you can take all of them out before you get back to the ground level. That big bubbler type shield that the slamming lid has also blocks your shots for dealing with just about any boss. So deal with them quickly, that way you don't have to worry about it. And I already mentioned steelheads, but they're that much more important to take out there in the second half of the match. Their bombs are huge and you have to wait for them to activate them. So the quicker that you can take out that steel head is less time that you have to spend focusing on them. And we also need to worry about steel eels in the second half of the match. With that big tail that they have being a shield to block your fire, you have to make sure that you lead them into smart areas, that way they're not constricting your basket, making it even harder to put those eggs in. And steel eels on spawning grounds make some weird turns that make it really hard to tell where they're going to go. So make sure you get them to a smart spot and splat them fast. Spawning Grounds is always a little bit easier if you can have a quick response to those shoreline targets. The more that we lead maws, scrappers, and other lurable targets to the shoreline makes it that much harder for us to get those eggs in. So make sure you lure in smart ways there in the first half of the match, and then deal with all those prior targets in the second half of the match. That way you can keep eggs going in at a constant pace. If in the last 20 seconds at Spawning Grounds you're not at quota, then you have to focus on getting those targets to the basket or using a special in order to clear the basket so that way you can get the eggs in. Just be careful about approaching a shoreline target in the last 20 seconds. You could be taking some desirable lures away from the basket, making it that much harder for us to reach a quota and to keep that pay grade. So always try to make sure that you're maintaining some kind of damage or paint output, and if you're not, make sure that you're getting eggs and putting them in. Just like you don't know which boss will spawn, sometimes you don't know which wall needs to be painted for you to stay alive. For our occurrences on spawning grounds, whenever we have a glowflies or a griller's occurrence, it works best to stay there right by the basket on that higher platform. For our glowflies, we have to make sure that we're always dealing some kind of damage to the horde as it's coming in. Since there's three shooters, it'll be helpful if someone's firing at the horde before it's getting to the ramp, either on the left side or the right side of the basket. But as long as the 52 gal and the octo brush are always dealing damage to that line, the H3 and the 96 gal can do some support dealing damage to the Goldie on approach, and doing some extra egg running while everyone else is trying to hold that damage line. On a griller's wave, you want to get that griller all the way next to the basket before you stun it. Once it's stunned, 
Try to splat it right there by the basket so that way all five eggs are right there, easy to put in. Whenever the griller is done right there, you'll have to make sure that either the 52 gal or the octo brush is running small fry control for the most success. The H3 and the 96 cal can do some small fry control, but their fire rate is just slow enough that they will have problems and you will get overran. Splat that griller fast, get those eggs in fast so that way you can get back to your location. If you're standing on that upper platform and a griller starts coming from the other side, you'll have to jump off of the platform so that way you can lead the griller away from the ramp and platform that everyone else is on. Keep a good focus on where that next griller is coming from, and griller waves have been going really easy here at Spawning Grounds. For a high tide of Spawning Grounds, if we're dealing with a regular wave, we still have to paint all these walls. At any moment, we can get hit by an enemy, boosted off of the stage, and that little bit of ink is all we need to keep ourselves from getting splat or landing in the water. If a fly fish spawns at the end of the grates, either use a special to take it out quick or just injure it, that way you don't have to deal with another one spawning in the same spot. But if you get a stinger out there, try to make sure that you splat it fast. That is a very rough location for a stinger. A griller's wave doesn't change too much on a high tide, but a glowflies does make it that much harder just in case you get knocked off of the platform. So try to be really aware of the chances you have to jump from the platform across the water onto the next platform and then get back to the platform as quick as possible as that's where all your teammates are and they need your help and damage output. A low tide of spawning grounds has a bunch of barrels that we can jump over and a bunch of turf that we can ink. Remember that you can use those barrels in order to block some steelhead bombs as well as just jumping over in order to get to the other side of some enemies. But always remember how much turf we have here on low tides. At any moment, you can use any point of egress to get back to the regular tide basket, just in case you're getting overrun, but be careful about spending too much time away from there. You'll have to make sure you make that approach, clear the basket area, and get the eggs in. If it's hard to get to that basket area on a low tide, you're going to find it really hard to win. During a Quahog charge, since the H3 and the 96 gal has the most awkward fire rate, it's definitely the best idea to get that 52 gal and the octo brush on egg running. But as far as cohawk charges go, as long as two turrets are always being used, it's really easy to keep the cohawks and bosses at bay so that way the egg runners can put the eggs in. Just be super careful about splatting bosses away from the basket or luring bosses into bad locations or splatting them there near the shoreline. There's always a turret that's higher up closer to the normal wave basket that can be used to keep the basket area clear in case things get crazy around the basket. On a mothership occurrence, the 52 gal and the octo brush can do a pretty good job on dealing with coolers on approach and running eggs. The H3 and the 96 gal can do a great job on splatting those chinooks on approach, but don't forget to keep an eye on that mothership, that way you can start causing some damage on approach. You will have to use the viewing platform area, but any extra damage you can cause to that mother approach keeps those eggs that much safer. When you're on a low time mothership, most of the coolers will land behind the basket instead of on the sandbars. So try to keep two people on the left and two people on the right and try to be careful about being too close to somebody as the Chinooks are dropping those coolers all over the map so it also works best on having people all over the map. You can go down the middle sandbar in order to hit that mothership on approach. Just make sure that you have some safety as shooting upwards at that mothership will give you some tunnel vision. A goalie seek at spawning grounds can be a little confusing sometimes, but as long as you're opening up a gusher as soon as the wave starts, that will either give you the goldie immediately or give you the quickest amount of information so that way you know where you need to go next. If all four players open up a different gusher right at the beginning of the wave, there's a high chance that you'll find it right then. And if you don't, you then have a lot of information that you can use to find that goldie. Be careful about releasing all the eggs in a really far away location away from the basket. Once that goldie goes back into a valve, it's slowly replenishing its health giving you more eggs the next time you find it. And if you did release all those eggs really far away, try to use those snatchers to bring them closer to the basket, or just find a new location that that goldie's at so that you can spawn eggs a little bit closer. For a mudmouth occurrence, since we don't have that blaster or that piercing damage with a charger, no matter what the mudmouth is, try to make sure that you guys are dealing damage to the lessers as well as throwing bombs. If you see someone taking out lessers, be the one to throw bombs and vice versa. And if it's on a wave 3, make sure that you use your specials on that golden bud mouth to get your egg counts as high as possible. On a giant tornado occurrence, we have that same issue with the mud mouths. We don't have a blaster, and we don't have piercing damage. So whenever the lessers start dropping, try to focus on dealing with those lessers, that way your whole team can get back to throwing eggs, moving them as quick as possible as a steady wave towards the basket. And try not to dawdle too much with a full ink tank. As soon as you get that ink past the line, Toss that egg and get another. All right, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the 52 gal. 
The 52 gal deals a nice punch, and it puts a nice blob of ink on the wall. But with its slower fire rate, you'll have to be careful about being too aggressive with this weapon. But considering the 52 gal is in our first slot, we have to make sure that we use its mobility and its paintability all throughout the match, both focusing on dealing with enemies and doing some extra egg running. The 52 gal can deal with fish sticks from the ground level, but you gotta get a little close to them. It can also deal with some stingers at a distance, but you need to remember how far the range of the 52 gal goes. Be careful about getting yourself into a stupid situation that you can't get out of. I give the 52 gal a wall paint score of 6 out of 10 for spawning grounds. The fire rate's pretty awkward, but those blobs on the wall are pretty big, giving you some pretty good mobility. Our second cooking utensil is the Octo Brush. While the Octo Brush doesn't have the same brush running speed as the Ink Brush, it still moves at a pretty brisk pace. But try to be careful about brush running all throughout the match. The Octo Brush has about the same damage output as the Tri Slosher, so as long as you're keeping away from getting right in the face of enemies and getting some kind of height on them, the Octo Brush has some pretty good range for its damage output, and it covers turf and walls just about as good as the Reflux. So as long as you focus on dealing damage with that wide arc that you have, it's a little bit easier to keep this area clear of lessers. But since it doesn't have any vertical range, you're going to have some problems with steelheads and fish sticks. Don't feel bad to ping this way, that way your teammates can come and help you out so that way you can get the eggs and run them in. If you're going down to the shoreline in order to take down a big shot or a stinger, just make sure you use that brush speed and any jump that you can to speed up your process. Try not to linger down there as the octo brush will do best staying close to the basket and being aware of where the enemies are and where the eggs are. The octo brush does some really good wall painting if you just jump off the side and paint the wall on your way down. I give the Octobrush a wall paint score of 7 out of 10 on spawning grounds. It can paint those walls really good and fast, but its problem is its range whenever you're trying to paint one of these really tall walls. For the best success, make sure you paint those tall walls on the way down. Our third cooking utensil is the H3 Nozzle Nose. The H3 definitely has the most awkward fire rate, but just like the other gals that we have in this composition, those hits are very punchy and they put some nice big globs on the wall. So any extra damage output or paintability that you do with the H3 is super needed. That range also makes it a fantastic weapon for keeping off of the shoreline so that way you can take out those priority targets like big shots and stingers. But the H3 and the 96 gal definitely have to keep a really strong focus on dealing with fish sticks, steelheads, and slamming lids. That octo brush can run up and activate that slamming lid, but considering how much bouncing around that that brush is going to give them, it might be easier just to take them out before they even slam down. The H3's damage output can also take out a Quahog in two burst shots. So try not to linger anywhere without doing anything. The H3 is definitely more of a support weapon, but once it's doing its job, you'll find it much easier to get around on this map. I give the H3 Nozzle Nose a wall paint score of 7 out of 10 on spawning grounds. It helps to have a little bit of extra range, that way you can paint some walls, giving you some strategies to reach some of these shoreline targets. But as long as you can control where that ink is going with every burst, it can do a really good job on painting these walls pretty quickly. Our last cooking utensil is the 96 gal. The 96 gal's fire rate is pretty slow, but as long as you can maintain those shots landing on your targets, the weapon does an incredible job at clearing the way and getting some extra eggs out there on the field. With that slower fire rate, you will want to aim on the right side of the rotation on fish sticks just to make it a little bit easier to take them out. But the aim with the 96 gal is something that needs to be practiced. As long as you can make sure those shots are hitting, it doesn't matter what you're aiming at, it takes it out and does a pretty good job painting the ground. Now one really big problem with the 96 gal is it doesn't have really good at foot painting, only painting around the feet with every four or five shots. So if you're playing the 96 gal aggressively, you have to make sure that you paint your feet before you start firing. Make sure that you paint yourself an exit before you start doing some support fire. With the range of the 96 gal and the H3, it should be pretty easy to take out stingers without getting so far down there to the shoreline. They're also great weapons for getting on top of a fish stick and providing that support fire from a really high location. The 96 gal is an incredible weapon for this composition, so don't sleep on its power and make sure that you're always dealing some kind of damage. I'll give the 96 gal a wall paint score of 6 out of 10 just like the 52 gal. It may have a slower fire rate, but that extended range gives you that same opportunity that the H3 has in painting some walls, that way you can use it as a strategy to reach some of these targets and stay alive. Our King Salmonid for this rotation is Horoboros. And this noodley boy has a higher HP than our Kohazuna, but he does have that Booyah Bomb that he's charging up. You can cause damage to this Booyah Bomb, which splats it in his mouth, causing some massive damage. And with that H3 and 96 gal, you've got some good weapons to cause that damage to the Booyah Bomb. 
The 52 gal and the Octobrush may not have that range, but they have the ability to splat lessers and deal with bosses pretty well. Make sure that these two weapons are constantly spawning more eggs and keeping the area clear. That way, whenever the H3 or the 96 gal want to focus on the Horroboros, they can. Or if they want to break away from combat in order to take out a boss or to get an egg, it's that much easier. You can use fish sticks and slamming lids to get a little extra height on the Horroboros. And with that, you can reach him with the 52 gal and the Octobrush. But just be careful about getting too much tunnel vision on Boris. That'll keep your eyes high in the air, and it's easy to get that tunnel vision and get splat by something that you just didn't see at all. I'd say it's almost a better idea to just go ahead and deal with all of the enemies and cause damage to the Booyah Bomb with eggs. This will probably cause the easiest, quickest amount of damage to the Horroboros. But if you see that Booyah Bomb almost completely painted your ink color, start firing shots at it and see if you can't splat it before he shoots it off. Always try to stay aware of what you're trying to accomplish here at Spawning Grounds. It doesn't matter if you're doing an extra wave or if you're doing an occurrence. Spawning Grounds is always going to be a bit tight, but since we have all of these walls and it's so paintable, try to keep it painted and try to keep yourself alive and always be trying to deal some kind of damage. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation. So if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye and if you want to give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. We've got the 96 gal in the comp, so you know I'm going to choose that 96 gal. I've just had a special connection with it ever since that solo match I did with Glowflies. Alrighty guys, have a good one. Bye bye.